what are the complications of mumps lot of questions are asked on complications of mumps and uh, many patients many of them are low socioeconomic status they do present late and so the complications are the presenting features in some cases there are three say, mcq scenarios mcq one liners which can be asked i have written them separately here first is overall most common complication kya hai it is meningitis or meningoencephalitis it may or may not be present with encephalitis second is if they ask most common complication of mumps in children again answer will be same meningitis or meningoencephalitis in case of adolescents and adults it is orchitis also called as epididymo orchitis because epididymis this uh, part adjacent to the testes may also be involved so that is the most common complication so if they are not mentioning age group the answer will be uh, cns involvement if they are mentioning age group then according to age group you should be answering young children it will be cns involvement that is uh, meningoencephalitis or meningitis and in case of older patients adolescents adults you will mark orchitis as the likely answer now first complication is meningitis and encephalitis mumps virus is a neurotropic virus and it enters cns via choroid plexus once viremia happens it produces aseptic meningitis so what are the features of aseptic meningitis this is something you must have done already multiple times but know that aseptic meningitis there will be raised cells there will be raised proteins pleocytosis is very common but often it is present with increase in the cells as well the cells are predominantly lymphocytic response so lymphocytic response is there and the culture of the csf is always sterile when you do for according to the routine bacterial tests and you find that the csf glucose is found to be normal however nelson says that some patients about 15% of these patients 15 to 20% of these patients may have low csf glucose transiently as well but overall what we find is it is a aseptic meningitis encephalitis may or may not happen if encephalitis happens usually encephalitis has a bad outcome especially in those you know japanese encephalitis and herpes and all those things here encephalitis even if it happens it usually has a good outcome and uh, long term neurological sequelae are less they can happen but they are less in patients of mumps encephalitis cns involvement when does it happen first nelson says it can happen before with or after the onset of parotitis this is mcq point asked in jipmer entrance exam some years back then again in jipmer alone they repeated the question but now they mentioned as specific points so they asked when are most cases seen the most cases again answer is taken from nelson 5 days after the onset of parotitis this is again mcq so please there are two different mcqs don't get them wrong both of them have been asked in the paper it was a statement based question in the first instance it was specific one liner which was asked in the second instance so if they ask is it a true statement cns involvement can happen with uh, with parotitis before that or after that the answer is yes it is a true statement but if it does happen what is the most common time the most common type will be after parotitis how many days after parotitis 5 days after parotitis symptoms of meningitis and encephalitis only with conservative therapy they tend to resolve in 7 to 10 days many textbooks say that some of these patients have problems related to raised intracranial pressure and so management of raised icp using hypertonic saline or mannitol for about one week is good enough along with the conservative measures rarely uh, some other cns complications may occur which range from transverse myelitis adem acute disseminated encephalomyelitis aqueductal stenosis facial palsy and sensory neural hearing loss regarding sensory neural hearing loss the cause of sensory neural hearing loss in mumps is damage to eighth nerve so it is a sensory neural hearing loss involving damage to the auditory nerve however it is a rare thing to happen and many cases the damage is transient so there is a transient sensory neural hearing loss most of these patients the sensory neural hearing loss tends to improve with age and many times it is a unilateral rather than being a bilateral loss now nelson says that symptomatic cns involvement occurs in 10 to 30% of infected individuals but csf pleocytosis is found in 40 to 60% of patients with mumps parotitis as i told you before pleocytosis has been shown to occur even in asymptomatic patients of mumps and so obviously if there is parotitis there is parotid swelling a significant number of them will have some degree of csf pleocytosis it will not be sufficient enough to call it as aseptic meningitis